the main reason I wanted to do uh, the BSA Media Fellowship is because I really wanted to improve uh, my my general writing skills. I wanted to be able to write quicker, to be able to write in a more accessible way. I think there's also the great opportunity to get behind the scenes with a, a, a major media organisation to see how they work and really interestingly to see how they work with scientists and how they might take a, a scientific uh, study, a scientific research report and turn it inside out really and really draw out the headlines and make it accessible and, and really pull out the interesting points for the public. You're pretty nervous when you turn up. I wasn't quite sure what to expect. Um, a typical newspaper will start at 10 o'clock in the morning, so I, I got there at 10. We had a coffee with uh, my mentors. They showed me around. Uh, about 10.30, 11 o'clock, I was handed a press release and told that within six or seven hours I had to have a story. It was going in the newspaper, it was going on the website, and to kind of just get on with it. So really, from an hour in, you're thrown in at the deep end and really expected to, to just get on with it. My mentors gave me uh, some great advice and they were kind of on hand to help out as well, but I, I found that liberating. I was, you know, given my own kind of identity and my own stories and um, my own freedom to ring who I thought was, who I thought could provide an interesting angle, be it the author or be it someone independent. Day one, the story was they had found a fossil a uh, fossilised worm and they believe, the scientists believed it was the first worm to use spikes as a defence mechanism. And so I rang the researcher, we had a discussion about it, um, I structured the article together and by the end of the day I had the article and then went through that with my mentor to kind of, you know, to twist it around a little bit and to, to play with it and then it was published about uh, seven, eight o'clock that night. It's really not my field. I mean, my research is on sustainable tall buildings. Um, I've never studied anything to do with biology, let alone defence mechanisms in worms before. So I was really outside my comfort zone. So the sense of achievement uh, to be able to be given a scientific paper, which is well outside my field, and then to turn it into an accessible 500-word article it was great. It was fantastic. Great experience. I was matched with, with Guardian Science um, well in advance. I got hold of my mentors who were Hannah Devlin, and, uh, who was a previous BSA uh, media fellow uh, several years ago, and Ian Sample, who are the two uh, journalists who work in science at The Guardian. Uh, they were massively helpful, um, not only when I was there, but in advance, you know, telling me what to read up on, giving me some advice prior to arriving, but also at the time, you know, giving me advice on who to ring, um, you know, how to frame that first kind of paragraph, but also not being overbearing at all. They very much let me get on with it, you know, and they let me make my own mistakes um, as well. One of the potential failings of academics in that kind of field is that we, we feel we need to read everything about a subject before we, we kind of collate it, before we turn an article into it. So I think on the third day I, was, um, I got a piece to write at about two o'clock in the afternoon, it had to be done by five, and I probably spent too long trying to understand absolutely every nuance of the piece before getting into writing it, and it was quite late by the time it was completed. Um, and, you know, I had to rush it a little bit in the end and it had to be, you know, edited a little bit. Um, but I learned a huge amount from that. You've got to structure the uh, article very quickly on, and, you know, get on with it. Don't wait till the last second. And the main difference between the two, I think, is uh, how dynamic uh, the media is. So the media will um, get a, a piece of research which is embargoed for another eight hours and they will... They will take what is five years' work in one day and turn it into something very accessible. So they're very, very dynamic, very quick. Uh, the ability to change direction very, very quickly, I think, is, is one of the key bits of learning I got out of this. So really I see academia as being um, sometimes like a, a, an oil tanker. It, it takes a long time to change directions on a piece of research. You have to go through so many, so many hoops to, to change direction, whereas in the media they're very, very quick, they're very, very responsive to breaking news and to to breaking bits of research as well. So that, for me, was, was hugely beneficial because it's given me a, a platform where if there is a bit of breaking news, I can 
very quickly pitch a, an idea to a platform such as a, the conversation and um, I have the confidence to churn out you know 800 words that is accessible but is also not dumbed down has a bit of oomph to it uh, and to get an article out within a day or so. You're writing for non-specialists that's the best way I try and describe it and there is um, you know, I found a lot of uh, scientists I spoke to were wary of the media when I rang them and said, I want to check uh, the quote you're going to, to give because you can put a quote in very many different kind of contexts as well. But, the, you know, the journalists I worked with were very, very, you know, didn't want to be sensationalist. You know, they, they wanted a great quote, of course, uh, but they never put that quote into a, into a scientist's mouth. And more often than not, we, you know, we checked... If something sounded quite sensationalist, I would, I would check with the, the scientists and say, is that within this context? Are you happy with this? So I think they're, you know, they, they want to, to pull out the, the headlines, but they don't want to over-dramatise something that, is, that is, is not worthy of that. I spent three weeks uh, at The Guardian. Um, I wrote ten articles during that time. I worked predominantly with the Guardian science team, but at the other end of the table was the Guardian environment team. Um, after a few days, they asked who I was, what I was doing, and before I knew it, I was writing bits for them as well. So I'd do a bit of a science article in the morning, an environment article in the afternoon. I wrote articles as varied as worms with spikes as a defence mechanism, down to things which were much more in my field of expertise, such as the government scrapping uh, carbon-neutral housing, which was a, a piece of the, the Guardian environment team. I was also lucky enough to, to pitch a couple of my own kind of ideas that went into the, the science theories kind of section. So I pitched a story about how our, some of our future skyscrapers could be built out of timber, and out of wood, and could we build a 100, 200, 300 metre tall building out of timber? And I was given, I, I pitched that kind of three days in and um, wrote that up over a number of days, interviewed people who I knew were experts in the field and really kind of drove that myself. And that was a, a longer article, but that was published about seven or eight days in. For me, there are a number of significant benefits of, of taking this kind of media fellowship. There is a time commitment, you know, three to six weeks spent at a media organisation, but really in the scheme of things that's a very small commitment for a very large kind of output. Um, the advantages are, well, first, you get a number of key articles to your name. Um, secondly, there's all the skills um, you're able to learn, the kind of being able to write a lot quicker, a lot more responsive, a lot more accessible. There's, you know experience really of, of being behind the scenes and, and actually working not being an intern but properly working at a large media organization and finally there's the contacts as well so I've got contacts now at the Guardian they want me to carry on pitching stories to them and you know that's a great thing for for, for your CV and a platform to to publicize future research if you look at a typical academic paper it may take you know a number of years to to generate, whereas, you know, an article takes an afternoon. And obviously they don't necessarily have the same scientific impact, but, you know, the ability of, of scientists and those in academia to be able to communicate their research and their findings to the general population, I think, is you know, massively important. And this is a great opportunity to develop skills within that field.